Hello and welcome to this lesson in the waves topic of AQA A-level physics on the diffraction practical endorsement. So in today's particular lesson we're going to look at how you can gain experimental results for the diffraction practical endorsement for AQA A-level physics. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson we should be able to detail the relationship between the diffraction orders and fringes and the slit to screen distance, understand how to carry out a practical for investigation into this and and finally detail the properties of the diffraction interference patterns produced. So in today's lesson we're looking at the following part of the AQA A-level physics uh, specification which is the required practical to investigation of the interference effects to include the young slit experiment and interference by diffraction grating. So in this investigation, your aim as a scientist is to work out the wavelength of laser light from an interference pattern produced by the Young's double slit and also the interference pattern produced from a diffraction grating. So fundamentally, if you can work out the wavelength of the laser light by two different methods by the end of the practical, you will have learned. Now, it's important that we do this because lasers have many uses in the real world, such as endoscopes, carrying out surgery, measuring the distance to far away objects. So to determine which laser to use in each scenario, the wavelength of a laser must be determined. So as a result, when lasers are produced, the wavelength of the laser must be calculated, and this is one methodology by how you can do it. So for the first practical, we'll look at the double slit investigation. So the materials you'll need for this would be a laser, you'd need a double slit ruling, so usually that's a double slit with about a one millimeter separation, vernier calipers to measure the slit separation, an adjustable single slit, but that might not be necessary if you have a laser, a white screen, and also a meter ruler. So what you would do in this investigation is you would set up your uh, apparatus in the following diagram, with your laser, then your single slit, but to be fair, if you have a laser, you probably don't need that single slit, then your Young's double slit, then you have your white screen which can produce the fringe pattern on it. So in this method what you do is you set up your apparatus as shown in the diagram with the laser illuminating the double slit and the screen at a set distance of D. You then carefully adjust the position of the laser until the light spreads out evenly over the two slits so therefore you can produce an interference pattern on the white screen. Now the fringe width or the fringe spacing which is W can be measured by measuring across a a large number of visible fringes but obviously take care when you're counting because you count from the first bright fringe uh, to the end so if you did that from the first bright fringe to the tenth bright fringe that's nine fringe width fringe widths because you look at the spacing not the actual fringes themselves you would then use a meter ruler to measure D then a measurement of the slit separation S is required now you could measure this value by using vernier calipers or a traveler microscope okay also what you could do is you could use uh, just the markings on the, the young slit itself and now if you are using a traveler microscope it must only be used to measure that slit separation and not the fringe width. You can then use the equation for the double slit which is lambda equals ws over d. You then change the value of d in the fringe width w and then you measure that for each value of d. Then if you put a graph of w the fringe width on the y-axis and d the distance between the slit and the screen on the x-axis you should get a straight line through the origin with the gradient of your line being the wavelength divided by the slit separation allowing you to work out the wavelength because it's the gradient times the slit separation. So you set up your apparatus as shown, you have your young slit there, you have your laser and your screen, you ensure that your laser beam is directed through the slit, so when the laser is shined through the young slit an interference pattern will be produced on the screen, you can then use a ruler to measure your fringe spacing, now again measuring the most fringe spacings possible will give you the lowest percentage uncertainty and then you divide by the number of spacings to get an average value, and like we just said remember to count the gaps not the fringes. You would then repeat the investigation for different values of slit to screen separation whilst the slit separation between the two slits is kept constant. So you can see here. Now for your second practical you're now going to be looking at the diffraction grating. So you'll need a laser, a white light source that will produce a narrow beam of white light if you uh, don't have the laser, uh, a plane transmission diffraction grating, a white screen and a meter ruler. And you'd set it up as follows with your laser going through your diffraction grating and then you can have your screen with your orders of diffraction patterns on them. 
So what would you do? You set up the apparatus as shown with the laser illuminating the diffraction grating and the screen at a distance d. You'd carefully adjust the position of the diffraction grating so that the diffraction grating is perpendicular to the beam of the light from the laser. So you might want to use a set square. The diffraction grating should then be visible on the screen. Now the number of orders shown will depend on the line spacing of your diffraction grating that you're using. Now the angles theta 1 and theta 2 can be determined by measuring uh, the distances uh, between the slits, the, dis the distances between the slit to screen and the distances between the fringe spacing. You can then use the formula n lambda equals d sine theta to determine the wavelength of the laser light. Remember n is the order of the diffraction pattern, d is the gradient spacing which is equal to 1 over the number of lines per meter which is tends to be given on uh, the diffraction grating and lambda is the wavelength of light. So the values of theta for each order above and below the zero order should be measured and then the mean value of of lambda can be calculated from the data. So you'd set up your apparatus as shown with a laser, diffraction grating and screen. You'd place a piece of paper on the screen. Then the laser would be passed through the diffraction grating to produce the following pattern. So you would note the zero with order. Now the zero with order is going to be the one in the center straight through from the diffraction grating. And then with a ruler, measure the distance from the zeroth order to your wanted order. So for example, from the first, from the zeroth order to the first order, H1 is this. Then from the, the zeroth order to the second order h2 is this then from the zero with order to the third order h3 is going to be this so you'll note your different distances there you can then measure your distance from slit to screen which is d and then you can see that here now again to find the most orders possible you can offset the zero with orders to one side so then there's enough space to fit in all the other diffraction orders so when you've done that you've got all your values you can use that to work out the wavelength of the laser light so in this particular investigation, we're looking at the interference effects to include both the Young slit experiment and the interference by diffraction grating. So if we've been successful and we've learned in this lesson, we can detail the relationship between diffraction orders and fringes and the slit to screen distances. We understand how to carry out a practical to investigate to look at this. And finally, we can detail the properties of a diffraction interference pattern. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on the Diffraction Practical Endorsement, which is part of the Waves topic for AQAA Level Physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.